So welcome to our kind of state of the state, our state of state um, presentation this, this uh, cold winter day. Uh, the, uh, it's certainly nicer than a few days this week, but it's still very, very cold and it looks like it will be for a while. So, but it's January in South Dakota. I did have a really in fun and um, in kind of inspiring uh, interaction with uh, new faculty this week. We had a reception on Tuesday night, which was one of the coldest nights of the week. And, and I was um, surprised, amazed, and at their, and many of them had just started this semester. And I was, um, you know, I, re I was apologizing for the weather and they were so excited. And I, so it made me feel really good that, that they're, they were so excited to be here and join us as, as part of our faculty. So it was a fun evening. Uh, on your seats, do you have uh, quick facts, um, which tells you everything you'll ever be asked about South Dakota State. And uh, hopefully I carry one of these in my padfolio every year, and I hope you do too. And I, I've uh, gotten a lot of questions over the years, and it's always been a good resource for me, so I appreciate that. The, um, the, doc uh, the document on strategic planning we'll talk about towards the end of the presentation. and with um, Vice President Willis and Interim Provost Hedge. And we did provide you with a copy of Impact 2018. So the, uh, the way we'd like to do this today is that I'm gonna start out and I'm going to give an update on our, uh, as a university, our uh, success and our movement to the goals that we set out in Impact 2018. And uh, and that's kind of, we know where we began. Many of us worked very hard on Impact 2018. And uh, for those of you who didn't, we're gonna give you an, an opportunity to work on a new strategic plan here today and uh, certainly need you, uh, need you all to, to work on it. But, but Impact 2018, awful lot of work, very thorough process, and we need to own it. And so we thought this was the best, uh, most appropriate way to talk about where we are. So. Uh, you have the full report in, in your hands, and I'm going to go through it and use uh, some key points to talk about. I'm not certainly not going to go over the entire report with you. I'm going to call out key things that I think describe where we're at right now, and, uh, and then we're going to talk about um, in the second part of this session where we're going and where we're going together and, and, uh, and how we're going to get there. <clears throat> So the first goal of Impact 20, 2018 was to promote academic excellence. And again, lots of, uh, uh, it's a, it was probably the, the most inclusive part of the, of the strategic plan. There's lots of metrics, metrics, metrics to talk about. I'm gonna talk about just um, uh, four or five of those that I think are extremely important. And the first one, um, that, that I'm going to talk about is uh, the accredited, certified, and approved programs. And this uh, number one, as you can see, our, our benchmark, our baseline was 32. We're at 39. Uh, we're, our goal was 42, so we've are almost reached our goal, and we have a, a, a full another year to go, uh, a year and a half, actually, in, in terms of the plan. Um, and we, we, have, uh, we had five visits last fall. We have five coming up either this semester or early next uh, fall semester. So this is a very, uh, this is a goal that I'm certainly proud to report out on. And I look at Carla Howard and, and uh, wonder how she does all the things she does for us, all of us. Uh, and this is one of them. So uh, along with Carla, uh, the Fishback family uh, has really empowered this process uh, by providing financial resources to help us move programs to accreditation. And as we communicate with our stakeholders and our and parents and prospective students, this is an absolutely critical um, accomplishment for us. I think that this will settle out in time at about 50 programs. And, uh, and then we're going to start into, you know, kind of always living with the reaccreditation somewhere on campus. And I think that's a really important 
uh, step for this university. Um, we are one of the smaller land grants in the United States, which means uh, we've got to, to work really hard to compete uh, against some of the larger ones that, that encircle us. So we, we have to be able to say that our engineering program, our pharmacy program, nursing program, hospitality management, counseling, on and on, are, are the equivalent academically as those in the major land grants that are around us. Uh, it's, it's our job and, it's, uh, and you should be so proud of getting, having 39 accredited programs, 10 more on the way, and a healthy process uh, on campus to keep moving in that direction. It is absolutely one of the foundational things that this university has to do and has to do well. Um, you know, if, if you're University of Nebraska, University of Minnesota, you may or may not be able to get away without having programs accredited. I think, um, I don't think we're in that position because I think our competition is extremely stiff. There's a, there's a cost to this. Uh, uh, faculty sal salaries and accredited programs will go up. And uh, accreditation, is, as you know, is based upon uh, the strength of the faculty, the academic program, and the, fisc uh, and the resources that they have to work with. And so that it, it, it um, challenges us to meet all three of those, but they're extremely important. The, uh, I, I don't know what the world would be without acronyms. So NESI means National Survey of Student Engagement. NESI data is available online and is used by um, everyone in the United States talking about higher education. And our, our NESI data, and uh, we've, we've been taking it since 2010. Uh, it's uh, ex extremely uh, important for us to benchmark against. And there's a few things that, that uh, I'd certainly like to call out um, about it. Uh, the South Dakota Board of Regents in their um, required general, uh, general education review and revision gave us the opportunity to look at cross-curricular skills. And, and using the NESI data about South Dakota State, the, the, um, the, the task force that was working on that, that um, cross-curricular skill and the selection of what we were going to choose dug into that data, uh, you know, which is basically a mirror of us, and I think chose an incredibly important um, uh, goal for us, and that is to, um, based upon that, they decided to, um, re they recommended that the addition of diversity, inclusion, and equity as a cross-curricular skill for all academic programs. And I talked about, I, I didn't use those same, that same language during my inaugural address, but it's certainly of the same spirit. So I was really pleased when I saw this emerge. And um, there's some other pretty cool things about uh, that, that this movement, uh, I think, will help us all, help us uh, and, be, and, and make a much, much better university. So um, couldn't be more prouder of that task force and the courage they had to look in the mirror, uh, which is that database, and uh, help us move forward. Lots of uh, 2018 uh, goals around uh, student success. And the one that I'm going to talk about uh, is the one that we've focused on. Uh, uh, my second summer, uh, I think Dean Thorngren's first summer, uh, when uh, we were uh, deans, uh, at just getting kicked off was the student success uh, project. Many of you were uh, integral in that process, and, uh, it, and it's working. Um, with a baseline of 75, um, a 26, there's a lag in this data that's a little frustrating, um, but it's just the way it is. The 2016 um, retention data was 76.1, but we know that the 2017 number is 78.6. So we've really made enormous progress in a short period of time. If it, you know, it bounced around a little, uh, it, it, uh, as all numbers will in a data set, but um, you start drawing a line through that and it's gonna look very strong. And really, I, th I think if we, uh, you know, again, in that student contact, we, um, 
And as students are making decisions about next year right now, which is one reason the cold weather doesn't help us maybe, uh, if, we could, uh, if we have that positive experience, they feel like um, this is the place for them, then, then this data will continue to, to move. And uh, so at reaching 80 in the fall of 2018, uh, might, we might not make, make it quite there, but we've made an enormous move towards student success because we, we can't raise graduation rates, we can't do anything else unless we move retention. So I think that's really important and I'm really thankful for all of you who do the hard work to help it move. The, um, so it, it is certainly the result of the student success model and we will continue our investment in it and our work on it with the Campus Early Alert platform implementation this May. And, um, and we have uh, started uh, under Vice President Willis's uh, leadership uh, a strategic enrollment management planning process. We, get, we did a few things this fall. We're gonna get a, a strategic um, enrollment management plan as part of a, our strategic plan will be one of the first things we do and might actually kind of, uh, we, we have some work to do there. And uh, so we're, I think uh, Michaela might visit with, with us about that, but uh, it's a key uh, part of our future. The, um, Probably the most challenging thing this university faces is on this slide, and this is um, extremely flat enrollment. In fact, the, the, we have, we reached our high enrollment in 2010, and it was 12,800 and a, and a dozen, uh, and we've not been very close to that since. And that has had an enormous impact uh, on, on Kind of who we are, how we feel about ourselves. Um, uh, it's had an uh, because it's uh, th while there's been an awful lot of activity uh, in buildings and um, and just all kinds of activities, uh, enrollment's really been stuck, and it has an enormous impact on our finances. And I, I in, in my uh, interpretation of the past. Um, if you allow that me, Joe, if you allow me that interpretation, uh, I, uh, uh, we, I, th I think following Impact 2018, we had a goal of 14,000. I think mentally we all moved there and uh, we built some infrastructure and communities and, and uh, goals around that number. And we, uh, for lots of reasons, uh, some of them, many of them uh, extraneous to things that we can control, we're not even close. And that, you know, being 1,400 off of that number is, is, is hard for this community uh, that we are as a university when we built an infrastructure, uh, some, some of what of an infrastructure uh, for, for a number that's larger. So the, um, I believe that 14,000 uh, is a, was was the appropriate goal. I think it is achievable. It won't be achievable by 2018, but I still think it's the right number. Um, the the Board of Regents, and if you listen to the governor's address this week, the Board of Regents has a goal for to have 65% um, of the population of South Dakota. Uh, to have post-secondary certificates or degrees, um, associates or bachelor's degrees or above. We're about 43%. We've got a long way to go. This state can't achieve its educational goals with that number, with 12,000, this fall we're at 12,613. So uh, it's, it's our job to educate the, the young people of this state in this region and, uh, and we need to do more of it. Um, having more people, having a higher percentage of our population with post-secondary educational experiences and accomplishments uh, makes us a better democracy, makes us a healthier economy, and, and uh, it just w would be an enormous lift to the Northern Plains. We're not alone at that number. Uh, it's very similar across small Western states. But, um, but it's um, to, to achieve what we have been tasked to do, which is education, post-secondary education, we need to be aggressive, and I think the goal is appropriate. The second goal in um, Impact 2018 
is around research and to generate new knowledge, encourage innovations, and to promote artistic and creative works. So it's certainly research, but it's also scholarship in all fields. And um, <clears throat> I, you know, I'm going to focus in on uh, could could folk again? I, I'm not going to go through all the numbers. I'm going to go. I'm going to talk about a goal that I firmly believe uh, is appropriate and one that we're that I hope we reset in our next plan, and that's towards research. Um, you know, the 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 goal of having over 100 million dollars worth of research. If you if we could have reached that, uh, which we won't by 2018, we're at about uh, we're a little over 50 million dollars now. Um, so we've got to double it. That's what I mentioned in my inaugural address. But that, that effort to, uh, to reach that goal will improve us as a university. It'll improve our teaching. Um, and then come invention disclosures and all those other things. Uh, but you've got to have a research engine that's healthy enough to cre uh, create energy at a research park. You have to have a research engine that's healthy enough to um, uh, provide opportunities for uh, undergraduate uh, research projects, et cetera. So, and, and I don't mean at all to um, ignore uh, the expressive uh, artistic nature of other fields. Uh, we, we need to, and, and I can talk about, I'll talk about PAC2, Performing Arts Center 2 project in a minute, and about the enormous investment we're making in that, in that project and how that uh, will translate into um, scholarship and, and artistic accomplishments of a large part of our faculty. But the, uh, the, the strengthening of our research um, infra uh, support structure has many facets to it. And um, organizational structure is important, and you got to get it right, and I think it needs to be uh, uh, so. Uh, Vice, interim Vice President of Research Kenchel Dorner is leading a discussion with the deans and, and associate deans about getting uh, 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 an organizational structure and communication system around research that mirrors itself across all the colleges. And I think that's a, an incredibly important first step. We've got, a, we've got to create the culture across all the colleges, and to do that, we have to, have, we have to look alike. We have to talk to each other. We have to interact with each other. We have to prioritize, uh, prioritize it e um, uh, equivalently. So, um, and then it's really about uh, building the opportunities for faculty to be successful. And so that includes pre and post award support. Um, it, it includes uh, grant writing workshops and boot camps and other training opportunities for faculty. Um, the other th work that, that the university needs to do at the departmental level is make sure over the next year that, that its faculty standards are appropriate for that goal. If, if, if indeed the next strategic plan calls for a doubling of research, we need to make sure that we've communicated um, clearly, appropriately in faculty standards uh, with the faculty and the faculty um, along with the department heads, uh, create them. Uh, so that's just foundational type work that needs to get done, both organizationally and with, with faculty standards. And then faculty need opportunities to succeed, just like I mentioned about Performing Arts Center. Um, we need research facilities for uh, chemistry, Matt, and you know, um, certainly in, in agriculture, pharmacy, uh, uh, education, human sciences, counseling, on and on. We need facilities for people to succeed in. And uh, I'll talk about that more in a minute. But a um, lot of effort has been placed, and I see John sitting there right in front of me, John Mendrin, who is an architect for, for us in facilities and services. And John is, I can tell you, John is busy every day working on the future of this university, and we appreciate all of their work um, to, uh, to move us into the future with, with better facilities so that we can have more and more success. The third goal of, of um, Impact 2018 was uh, to extend the reach and depth of the university by developing strategic programs and collaborations. And um, so this really is a land-grant goal. 
this is not this would not show up on the on a strategic goal of uh, uh, you know a, a private uh, liberal arts uh, university. This is something that we should own with great pride, and and it has enormous distinction. So I'm going to call out a, a a few of those. I I uh, I hope that you'll uh, tonight. Uh, it's cold, no games tonight, Justin. So uh, well, there's one, but it's away. Uh, you'll dig into Impact 2018 because it does include athletics. It does include camps. It, it, it's, this is a br I'm just gonna highlight a few things about outreach and engagement that I think are really important. But this, the, the work, I was on this committee uh, when, when we did Impact 2018, and it's really a very comprehensive goal, and uh, I think we have an awful lot to be proud of here. We've achieved many of these, and if, at, if, I, I, you can see them better than I can. At the bottom of those are some about ac uh, athletic performance and, and academic performance of athletes, and we're, we've achieved many of those goals, which is a good thing. But I'm going to uh, call out a couple of them that I think that are really important for that access part of my inaugural address that I I, th I think are just so very important and why, why we can lead the way. So the baseline, this is kind of unbelievable, and I, I look at my friend Don Marshall, and I, and I know how hard Don worked uh, and, and uh, other uh, associate deans for academics worked, um, and my fellow deans worked at getting um, this number up. Uh, the, the articulation agreements and the work that it does is hard and it's time consuming and it's frustrating because you can't get that, you know, that partner maybe to raise the level of their performance just a little bit to help us out with that agreement and you work with them and so I've, I've watched it, I know how hard it is and I also know how important it is. But as we try to reach that goal of 65% of our population, this is a critical um, a part of our work. And to, to have doubled just in a couple years the number of articulation agreements is, is great. I'm not sure we'll reach 150. I, I'm not sure that, that reaching, and this one in particular, reaching it perfectly is um, um, specifically important. I think the momentum is enormous and the impact will be incredible. So um, a group of us will be in at Lake Area at eight o'clock tomorrow morning working on articulation agreements and trying to build a better relationship with Lake Area. We don't, as you well know, we don't have a community college system in, in South Dakota. We're not, we, um, we're not using that as an excuse to uh, not build the bridges between their programs and uh, the, the stair, stairwells or whatever metaphor you want to use to allow young people to start uh, somewhere on that post high school uh, journey and, and perhaps end up here. And uh, we can do that at Lake Area, we can do it with, um, at the uh, four tribal colleges and uh, it's extremely, again, it's extremely hard work but it's, ex it's also our job and I couldn't be more proud. Um, Mary Kay Helling, who I'm not sure is here. Um, of course she is. <laughs> Mary Kay Helling deserves an awful lot of credit for a awful lot of things that we've been talking about today. Uh, at, the, at the bottom of that, that um, slide is um, um, continued strong relationships with tribal colleges and, and with um, uh, Ruth Harper and Wiaka, and I don't, can't remember Wiaka's last name, I can't hear very well. Sorry. It's all right. Uh, a graduate student, I won't try. Um, she, we are working with the four tribal, three of the four tribal colleges can certainly work with Standing Rock as we move on to improve the faculty credentials uh, of their instructors and their, to, to help them uh, 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 with accreditation. We, we can, no matter how many articulation agreements we have uh, or how, you know, you've got to have, um, they have to be an accredited um, uh, college or um, technical school or, or junior college or community college. And so helping the tribal colleges with the, the probation, the HLC probation that they face is, uh, is the right thing to do. 
and it's the high impact, it's the high leverage point. It's the first thing we have to do. And um, Mary Kay has just done an enormous amount of work with, at, at OLC and up at um, um, Sisson and Wapaton and down at, um, at Senegleshka, at Rosebud, uh, helping them uh, improve faculty credentials so that we can help them with accreditation. And that, all of that work will help all of us um, one of my uh, favorites, I guess, is uh, about outreach is uh, the, the, the internet, the internet-based learning platform that we started as part of the extension reorganization called iGro. Um, uh, actually, uh, this year we'll have over this last year we had over a million page visits um, in a uh, in a state with 800,000 people. Um, I think in 27 six and Next year, this number number will read about 750,000 users, and uh, so made enormous progress very rapidly at disseminating unbiased science-based information to literally um, um, hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, the as you can see, the the growth in the our mobile device, uh, which is being uh, re-engineered right now, has been. Uh, is important because that usage has really increased. While um, it's, we've had people from 208 countries uh, view iGro and, and the length of stay is, is uh, getting longer every year. So lots of good uh, Google analytics show that it works. Uh, plus we've done uh, or third party surveys on, on its use and gotten very positive results. And maybe, when, and really with, uh, we brought Laura Berg on as a, um, College of Ag Bio um, communication director and Laura really helped us move that bottom number to have over 500 <clears throat> um, news organizations use iGro as a source of information is powerful in many many ways uh, so not only is it great for South Dakota State as a whole um, but it's also I think it's a really uh, <clears throat> neat way to protect the web uh, on the unbiased part and uh, maybe the fake news part too, I don't know. But um, The fourth goal <clears throat> of Impact 2018 was to se secure the human and fiscal resources to ensure high performance through financial management and uh, governance. And I, I uh, want to talk about five of these areas. Um, the first one is endowed faculty positions. And the goal, the 2018 goal is, was 16. And we've, we've um, got to make sure that's right. Oh, as of today, we're at 15. Um, and, and just this week, we're having conversations about two more. So uh, this is really, uh, uh, an ex you know, I felt, I, looking at uh, Mike and, and Tom, uh, I know uh, the staff, um, uh, of the foundation, as I worked with you guys, this was hard. This is really hard work. Um, it's, it's not, you know, there have been an awful lot of gifts to scholarships, an awful lot of gifts to buildings, and this was new for the, the um, our alums and our stakeholders to talk about gifts uh, in, a, in a really, uh, in a time in a, a market that doesn't have very low yields on, on long-term endowments, it was, it's really been tough to uh, talk people into giving large sums of money into endowments that didn't yield very much, but would make a big difference for our faculty. And this is, I think, is really taking off. And you know, um, I think if, as you think about the, the uh, university experience that prepared you to be here, if you'll, walk up and down those hallways in your mind, you'll see, you remember all the endowed professorships of the, and how important they were. And, and uh, for us to achieve this goal uh, ahead of schedule and to be having conversations um, literally as we speak about more is, is a game changer. So I, I, it will improve a recruiting and retention of faculty, it'll reward faculty, it'll give a new, provide them new resources, uh, which will expand to, to student, uh, again, just funnel right down to student success. So it's, uh, it's been a, uh, a great win. And, you know, we have a set of institutional peers and um, 
but I, I know from uh, my own college experience as a dean of the College of Ag Bio, um, I, I really didn't feel like I was competing against maybe the, the peers that the, the Board of Regents had selected for us. We were competing, Don, against um, the major land grants in the, in the Midwest. And so th this will allow, this type of uh, work will allow us to compete better uh, in that marketplace as we recruit faculty, as we retain them, and build their success. So I'm really excited about it. Um, a couple years ago, just going to be perfectly blunt with you, um, we all stumbled on the uh, climate survey that was attempted, and I'm not, we're not going backwards. We're going to do another one. We're going to do it differently. We're going to do it on, start on January 23rd. I, I absolutely, uh, I won't beg, but it'll be close. Uh, I need you to participate. We need everybody to participate. This is an incredibly important uh, uh, piece of, of uh, work for all of us so that we can benchmark ourselves and who we, who we see ourselves as, where, where we can improve. So, it, it, you know, there's um, 2,700 employees uh, in the, at SDSU. The, not, you're, you're not all here. So uh, I need you to be, um, to carry the message to all of your peers to fill out the survey uh, and, and get as many students as we can to, to fill out the climate survey. It's a national survey. It's, uh, um, it's, we're going to, we, we won't be doing the analysis. We'll get the data, but we, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a very different approach and I think very successful, uh, but, but we need as high a level of participation as we possibly can get. And that data, this data, will really inform our strategic planning because it'll, uh, again, it'll show areas where we can improve and it'll show, uh, certainly show uh, areas of pride where, that we can highlight as we communicate uh, with our stakeholders and our students. So please join me in, in uh, making that a big success. The um, technology related projects, and I'll run out of expertise real quick on this one, but, um, but Mike's here to help us. Um, there have been a lot of, lot of work done on technology. Uh, you know, as I look at the history, I was an extension associate trying, working on my PhD in 98 as a group of prisoners, as, pres or as Governor Jankelow said, the best prisoners in, in the United States. He was tr Trumponian in his uh, language, as you think about it. <laughs> um, best, that's what he said, best prisoners in the United States. Well, we had them here on campus. <laughs> spent the summer with us and they pulled wire through all the buildings. Well, we're gonna refresh that almost 20 years later. Uh, Mike's done an uh, incredible job um, kind of uh, protecting the resources. Where's Mike Adeline? Uh, he's got the money to do it. We're going to have a refresh that project. And uh, so if you see somebody in an orange suit, Mike, I don't know what the plan is, but uh, we've got, we're going to refresh and rebuild our, our, the infrastructure around um, around the, the uh, uh, internet and uh, our, our technology, and I, I think that's really great. Um, there's been like 4,000 different uh, participants in safety and security training programs. You know, that's, all, that's many of us going through several of them, but that's a good thing. Uh, 75 smart classrooms refreshed and rebuilt. That's a, a commitment that I think Mike deserves a lot of credit for, that, that, that we will continuously improve those and, and bring on new technology as fast as we can. Um, so I mentioned the university infrastructure uh, on the continuing bullet, and then the last one, Global Learning Conference, we are going to host this in 2017, um, uh, a global technology in the classroom uh, conference here, at, at, and it'll be at Macquarie. So I think we, we're not only uh, rebuilding, we're leading, and I think I'm really, really proud of that. Um, Dean Cattleman is in here, he's in Hawaii, I'm jealous, because uh, I'm not, uh, but he, he has to come back to it. So uh, I'm trying to figure out how to, what to say or do on Monday. Uh, I hope it's cold, so. Um, <laughs> Seriously, I do. <laughs> uh, I, wow, you know, you look at this, this list, and I know it's small for some of you in the back, but it's, it's really impressive. And the, 
the, just the completed projects in 2016, um, you know, calf research, swine research, um, uh, Dana J. Dykehaus, uh, incredible stadium, which we were given the coolest new building of the year award by the con contractors in South Dakota on Tuesday night. Um, and, and Justin and I were there and Dana Dykehaus. Um, uh, we've got a uh, new chiller plant, which um, it's a technological wonder. If you haven't been in one of them, it's, they're, they're really cool. But they, uh, it improves the infrastructure for all of us. Um, and it's a good thing. Like we need a chiller, right? <laughs> um, lots of construction underway. I get a lot of questions about what's going on out there by Lake Cattleman. Uh, that it's a. Uh, uh, we need a boat or something next time. Uh, there is a new plant science support re research facility. Very uh, kind of innovative design. It'll be really pretty. And uh, so that's being built um, right now. That will improve our plant science research and uh, is, is a great project. Um, lots of things were completed, and you see the list up there, Brown Hall, um, Ethel Austin Martin remodel of the, t uh, the testing center, um, Wagner Hall nursing classroom. I got up there and saw that, and it was really neat. Um, so kind of uh, the animal science complex research labs, uh, many things underway. Um, the uh, re renovation of Avera Research Labs. Um, I think we're gonna do, we did one this year, and I think we're hoping to do another one, uh, move some things around and do some more of that. Um, just from uh, uh, who we are on campus, uh, the Medal of Honor Park was, was repositioned. I think it's nicer than ever. Uh, we have a local foods and education center that's taking place. Uh, that's the up on the northwest part of campus, and it's going to be uh, really fun. And David Wright has just done a super job leading that. And uh, it's probably the easiest money I've ever raised was about that. Uh, people want to give to that, so it's been a lot of fun. Um, Sylvan Green update, Alumni Green, um, and College of Engineering Monument. I think they got that done just about as the weather finally closed in. So lots of exciting things and, uh, and lots of exciting things coming. And, and to help you keep this in perspective, the two, two of the big projects that will be done this year, Harding Hall and PAC-2, along with the Plant Science Support Facility, will open up 100 new off or renovated or new offices for faculty. So while it's about a new performance space, Dennis, uh, which will be wonderful, it's also about a better place for faculty to, uh, to and, and we will continue that. That's not going to stop. We have other colleges that, that need uh, new faculty um, or renovated space, and um, I'm committed to, to bring that online. I wish I could do it with a snap of a finger, but I can't. It's going to take a little time, but we really are committed to it. On the decentralized budget, and I'm glad Joe's in front because all the questions will go to, to Dr. Santos here. Um, we uh, certainly got it underway. We've been through it for several years. We're firm, I'm a firm believer in the process. I'd like to tweak a couple things on it, but um, it's added enormous transparency and, and communication across, across the colleges. There's some m misconceptions and there's some uh, behavior that we certainly uh, want to address um, and, and, and discuss. There's a, the University Budget Oversight Committee, which has faculty representation, meets uh, at least every month. And uh, so it's a very active process. Uh, need to stay engaged. We will have uh, UBOC budget hearings in March. They are open um, and they are comprehensive and really do talk about the future. The, uh, I think some of the factors <clears throat> that have frustrated some about the process really don't have anything to do with the process, and I, I've highlighted a few of them up there. We've had actually um, no growth in student enrollment, so, uh, and with several years of flat of no tuition, our revenues have been, <laughs> you, you know, do the math, absolutely flat. Uh, while, as I've talked about before, we've had this kind of insidious uh, normal, uh, but insidious inflation on a lot of aspects of, of our operation. Uh, online and dual credit have certainly uh, changed the uh, higher education um, 
landscape, not only in this state, but in all states. And, and I didn't put up some, um, I'm looking for Lindsay Hamlin, we, I didn't highlight some of the work that uh, we've got more online programs, Lindsay, than we've ever had, and we've got more coming, so, right? So, um, you know, we're in the market, we're working hard, but that uh, has changed the, the budget. The, the other things that I think are, are realities that impact us that we uh, probably don't, um, probably underestimate their impact on us were the, the uh, frozen tuition for two out of the last three years, um, salary policy, um, and then the moving the reserves that I talked about um, from five to 10%. That alone was an enormous change and uh, uh, impacted all of us. So I, I, I hope we are all very, very thoughtful at the at UBOC and at the college and departmental levels uh, uh, and at the, and at the uh, uh, units, uh, I was thinking of facilities and services, Jonathan, about the, the impact of those things on the budget that has nothing to do with the budget structure, right, Joe? Those things, they impact it, may, maybe they impact a little bit differently than the other model, but um, these were big, big players in where we are today and where we're going. So uh, really important to keep um, keep in mind. Uh, looking forward, um, certainly need to do some alignment of our resources with our strategic priorities. And so um, we lost a major flow of revenue to support scholarships and we have to realign ourselves and keep this, keep, to keep those scholarships, which we absolutely have to do. That's going to be a major um, uh, change for uh, in in the budget model, um, we we won't be asking for strategic reinvestment uh, proposals. Uh, we're changing that process. I've asked the deans to um, uh, look at academic program initiatives and and research initiatives and do it internally, and to set five year goals, but to uh, uh, five of the six colleges, and, and we're working on number six, and it'll be fine. Uh, five of the six have very large reserves, have the capacity to meet those goals. And uh, so I, I, we're taking a little bit different approach, and I think it'll have enormous, enormous payoff. And I, I am absolutely convinced that um, the, the challenges that we do face, um, we can um, work, with, work smartly and um, and but it'll take some courage and we'll get things going in the areas where we do have some challenges. Um, so I think that's all I'll say there. Um, this is where we're, this is how we're gonna change research. We're gonna change it internally to the colleges and, uh, and I, each college will, we're kind of doing an inventory with the deans, with, with, um, with Kenchel. And we will, um, so each college will have a different five-year plan to increase research. They, they, all, they, don't, they don't have the same organizational structure. They don't have the same challenges. So the, they don't have the same missions. So they will look different. And it's research and scholarly, not just research. Um, <clears throat> I think I'll, this is my last slide um, for a minute. So the budget priorities are around access. So we're committed to th that scholarship money. It's uh, $800,000 uh, that we need to replace that we've lost through the loss of royalties from a, from a patent. Um, the initiative that I talked to you about uh, around the land grant money that we receive because we're a land grant, um, I've, I've written a white paper, shared it with the deans, and we're gonna share it with the rest of the community um, about what I'm calling Wakini, which in Lakota means new beginning. And uh, we're gonna take those resources, which is about $600,000 a year, and reinvest them in the, in, um, in the university towards initiatives uh, of outreach and student support for um, um, members of the tribal communities of South Dakota. Uh, on research, certainly uh, very excited to, to get that started. Uh, there's an enormous upside, and um, in the in the in the budget that was approved in December, the federal budget that was approved in December, uh, NSF, NIH, USDA, and on and on all have more grant dollars available than the year before. They all increased, 
So we've got to work against some paradigms that, that, that uh, grant dollars, federal grant dollars are, are low. They are hard, I I'm, understand, but the, actually the pools are larger. So I, I, I know we can compete. I know we can um, achieve our goal. And then the strategic re reinvestment really is around student success through faculty success, and a lot of that has to do with facilities. But uh, um, we're, we're not, we're building facilities, I, you know, that I asked how many, um, just this year, how many faculty uh, of, of those two major projects, and it's uh, how many faculty will get refreshed offices, and it's nearly 100. I, I just think that's an enormous step, and we'll keep that up. 